if Rishi figures out how to intercept the bonus fruits, can take them and run from them. That's always like the first thing to look at when you're looking at Pac-Man. Number two, how is Pichu going to be able to um, intercept Pac-Man's recovery? We know that trampoline has been changed significantly in Ultimate from how it was in Smash 4 in that you can now damage the trampoline. You can take away jumps from it without having to interact with it immediately. So it's going to be very interesting to see how Sinji adapts to these changes while also fighting what's relatively a new enemy. And I mean, also trampoline apparently does not beat out shields anymore. And you always used to force the opponent into a jump, which was one of the reasons why that <laughs> that up he had a shield was so, so, just had so much utility in the previous game. But this time around, well, okay, so he's throwing out a lot of these thunder jolts, but those damage you. And Pichu is a light character. He's a tiny little boy. Look at him. <laughs> now, one thing I've always said about Pichu in a game where rage exists is that him hurting himself isn't the worst thing in the universe anymore because he has moves that don't hurt him. So, and if you play safe enough, you don't have to worry about it. But at the same time, like, Rage is not linear like it was. Instead, it's a switch that turns on, I believe, at 120%. So, no? It, it's it's actually the same percentage uh, markers as Smash 4. It's just how it works is different. Yeah, okay. this, this game is weird. Okay. But, um... There's been a lot of misinformation uh, floating around, and so, like, as the game lasts longer, we'll figure out more of the actual intricacies. Uh, but in the meantime, there's no point to talking about Rage if he ain't got any. That key gonna be taking his stock. Sinji looking like he's in a pretty good position, and... <laughs> wow. <laughs> the, the water from the hydrant went upwards on the shields. That's gonna be fun to see. You know, we started this set thinking about wow. uh, what it's like to... No, double tap! Double tap! We started the set talking about Sinji uh, fighting Rishi and what to look at for Pac-Man. But I think one thing that really needs to be considered is what do we have to look at for Rishi fighting Pac-Man as someone who's not, who's coming from a game who doesn't have such an eccentric character like Pac-Man with someone who's so well-versed in being able to set up traps and lay out such oddities. Like, Rishi has to rely a lot, a lot more heavily on fundamentals and just trying to figure out what he's fighting and that's what's keeping him at a baseline right now. He manages to take the stock with relatively little damage on him. And that is one thing. Pichu does have a really good pressure game. He has the electrical attacks, which add some extra heals, shield stun. And Pac-Man losing, really, the supreme utility of that up he had a shield. And his, shield, his grab is better, but it's still not that great. And so you saw he was pressured in the corner, and Rishi just kept poking at him until that forward tilt finally connected. I seems like he's slowly developing a game plan, using less Thunder Jolts and instead trying to zone break, get in Sinji's face, and that is what's doing well for him right now. <laughs> yeah, zone breaking has always been like the go-to format for fighting, not even just Pac-Man, but Sinji really, even amongst the other characters that he dabbled in. in Better Smash time him out. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, I mean, you can always time him out too, that's always a thing. Um, <coughs> but it is also worth noting how, like, so Pichu's got a zone with these moves that have some electricity to them, so yeah, they damage him. Oh! You pick him off the ground, so it's kind of nice. That spike from the down air, something that Pichu and Pikachu haven't had in previous iterations, and it's arguably one of their best tools now because you can set up for the ledge pressure so well, and we saw how Rishi was able to very easily pick up Pac-Man from the ledge. I mean, these were characters that already were so good off the stage, and now you've given them an actual viable spike? I mean, I'm not going to question, you know, the sort of decision-making there, but it's one of the reasons why these two characters are right now sort of being really hyped up as possibly some of the strongest, if not the strongest characters in the game. Yeah, as far as new things go for Pac-Man, really the only new cool thing he got is that if he re-grabs his fruit, he could charge it again. Well, no, there are a couple of other things. For instance, the water now will push back the fruit, and he can re-grab it that way. Also, Z Bell, when Z-dropped, will stun now. Unfortunately, he has lost a lot of other utility with Z-dropping, where it will despawn after doing it once. But nonetheless, having Bell in hand is a lot scarier than it was. Oh, and having Key is also always as good as it's ever been. That's going to be game one for Pac-Man and Sinji. I'm actually very curious to see where Rishi takes Sinji, just because a lot of the stages um, that Pichu can benefit from, Pac-Man can play on very well. If Rishi wants to play it a bit slower, bring uh, Pac-Man to a larger stage, then Sinji can camp much more easily. And we've seen from the past that Sinji is no stranger to being able to lock out his opponents effectively. 
Or if we go to a smaller stage where Pichu can try to go for earlier kills, control stage a little bit better, we might see a bit more aggro play from Sinji. You'll see a lot more nares, a lot more forward air, and just more contesting for the stage. It's going to lead to a lot more damage on Pichu. And a lot more ways that Pichu can just sort of die out. I mean, one thing also is that you can kind of see the evolution of the flow chart, of the game plan, of what to do when Pac-Man is off stage. He's been slowly chipping away at sort of the like the, the little minutia and figuring out, okay, here's what I should be doing in this situation. Here's where maybe I should go deep, extend a lot. And a lot of these uh, stocks have either, it's either he's gotten really close to getting a stock from an edge guard or just been an outright edge guard, like it's that down air where he was at the ledge uh, last game. Oh. <laughs> the thing I find humorous about the uh, the trampoline now that it's getting damaged by uh, Pichu's thunder jolts. Ooh. <laughs> the fact that the trampoline soaks up those hits, it doesn't even threaten zone from Sinji. Sinji's like, yep, yeah, still gonna go through my game plan. That was a zero to death. He hasn't gotten touched once so far. That I was I mean, I was talking about how Rishi was slowly understanding maybe what to do, but <laughs> right now maybe Sinji's the one who's like, okay, I figured it all out now. 56 damage. Yeah, listen, the game's different, but name's the same. Sinji's still here to combo people into oblivion. Oh, and you cannot it. understand this character in one sitting. Oh, man. The, <laughs> the fact that Sinji can use the pellet, and the pellet will absorb the attack, and then he can eat it. So Pichu damages himself, and Pac-Man heals from it. Yeah, that seems balanced. <laughs> this looks like a good matchup. Oh, boy, keeps on trying. Let's go, Pichu. Yeah, we're still seeing a bit more of a... Rishi not doing as much of the zone breaking this time. He's doing more of those thunder jolts. And they're not really working out for him because Sinji's just able to play around them so effectively. Maybe he's nervous about challenging Sinji in his own comfortable zone. But you got to do something to wrench him out of it because as it stands right now, he's taken 23% this entire game. I think it's a lot more just the oddities of fighting Pac-Man and someone so well-versed with this character's tools, despite how these tools may have changed. Back to, uh, like, Rishi has to deal with a lot of things that he may not have been well studied for, just because Pac-Man is a very strange character, and if you don't know what you're up against, you will fall victim to a lot of ways that you'll just die out. So, you know, people are asking what the differences between Pichu and Pikachu are in terms of, like, why should you play Pichu? Uh, that down air? <laughs> I mean, Pikachu's down air is really good, but Pichu's down air looks even more brutal. As far as the differences go, I mean, Pichu's lighter, much lighter. Like, what What actual slight, like, differences in terms of not, like, an advantage, even if it's, like, a singular move. He's smaller. That is true. Um, I don't know exactly which moves are more potent, but I've been told a few of them have more potency to them. I think overall there's more damage, I believe. Which would make sense, you know? If he is, in fact, like... I think he's based on... You know, if they're snakes, and when snakes are young, they can't control their venom as well, so it's more dangerous to be bitten by a baby venomous snake. And I oh, think see, that's no, the Pichu's inspiration. a mouse. We're learning here today at Xeno. And uh, speaking of learning, <laughs> it seems that Rishi's getting a little bit more of a handle on things, having now finally taken a stock off of... Uh, Sinji. However, it might be a little too late. He's still got some stocks to work with. Ooh! Yeah, now that's the spot, man! Well, no, but he could have hit somehow, like, you know, he can still get rid of that pellet. He did it earlier with the Thunder Jolt. And if he did that, I believe Pac-Man has the same issue where you can just steal his third trampoline from him. And he's done so. Oh, he's so quick with it! With the ability to just see it coming and both, it, uh, just sort of nut. Uh, nullify that projectile and heal from it so quickly. I mean, it is a little tactical. Oh, yo, that down, down tilt puts at the perfect spot for that you, down air to just was, annihilate his opponent. That is a bit of a, I haven't seen Pikachu's been doing that. I haven't seen Pikachu's been doing that. It's so, cute, uh, and now there's a very concrete game plan behind Rishi that he's executed throughout the entirety of that second stock of Sinji. So that's just keep him at the ledge, keep on pressuring him out. When the time is right, move in, down tilt, down air, shake his hand, because it's working really well. Mind yeah, he, you, she's bleeding hard right now at 121. That's, that's, a, much that's a lot of rage. And if he gets him at the ledge one more time, if he gets one more of those down tilts, that would be it. He'll be taking this to a game three, especially after since he was up by so much. But consistently, I've been hyping up a comeback, and it just hasn't happened. Maybe Rishi will finally uh, make me not eat my words. 
I mean, yeah. listen, you, you, you know me. It doesn't matter what game is being played. I'm always rooting for the game three, the game five, the game ten. Like, let me see oh. it. <gasps> that's big. That's is he sick. Done? Nah. Oh, he. No, he might be. No, oh, the that's puppy. the wrong one. <laughs> oh. Hey, at least we learned today that side beat kills Pichu at uh, atrocious percentages. Okay, well, I gotta say. Look at that. The... Dramatic finish into just slightly flying to the left. <laughs> into dramatic finish gets sent into the next town over. Oh, man. I, I, I love the dramatic finish. It's. it's... Uh...